All right, this is going to be over metering devices. The metering device is one of the major components of the HVACR systems. Without it, you could never have the high and low sides. If you recall, the compressor is what moves the refrigerant. Well, the metering device is what restricts the refrigerant. So that gives you division between the high and low side. Now, we're going to cover several different types or categories of metering devices, but keep this in mind. It doesn't matter whether we call them a capillary tube, a restrictor, a piston, uh, a few other names come to mind, TXV, TEV, depends on how old you are, which one you want to call that. That's a thermostatic expansion valve. It doesn't matter. They all do the same job. They meter the refrigerant into what component? Evaporator, right? Okay. So it is the division between the high and low side. The most simplest of all <coughs> is a capillary tube. You can see how that would restrict. It's a small diameter pipe or tubing. It's what, what determines how much refrigerant that it will meter depends mainly upon the high and low pressures, the pressure differential that is, the length of the capillary tube, the inside diameter of the capillary tube, how many turns there are in the capillary tube, and one more thing that most people don't realize, and that's the temperature of the capillary tube. Okay, now all those are factors, but there are no moving parts in there. Well, if you need to adjust the capacity of a capillary tube, how would you do that? Number one, why would you do that? Okay, what if you have to replace a capillary tube? Then you need to make sure that you get the right diameter. You need to make sure that you get the uh, right length and the right uh, turns, if so called for, in that particular one. But that means that you may actually have to cut that new capillary tube. If you take a tubing cutter and try to cut this, you're going to crimp it down and you're going to affect the size of the inside down. So the correct way to cut a capillary tube is to take a file Short, then break it off. And the reason that is, is you don't decrease the size of the actual inside diameter by doing that. If you took a, if you took a uh, cutter, the roller type cutter, it would actually decrease the size. I'm going to pass that around, and while that's going around, in fact, let's just take the other little piece and pass it this direction. While that's going around, I want to tell you about a capillary tube's capability. Most folks will say that cap tubes, we can't adjust the refrigerant flow through there. Well, that's not entirely true. One of the most precise ways of metering the refrigerant is through a capillary tube system by having that capillary tube wrapped around a heater. The heater will actually increase or decrease depending upon whether it needs more refrigerant to evaporate or not uh, by the amount of heat that's, that's put on the capillary tube. It causes more flash gas inside the capillary tube. Well, when you have more flash gas, you're going to deliver less liquid refrigerant into the evaporator. In doing so, that's going to decrease the pressure of the evaporator or the, or the amount of BTUs that the evaporator is going to remove. How precise can that be? I have worked on some systems that were used for what they call freeze baths and they measure temperatures in the millions of the degrees in that freeze bath. So, you know, you don't think of something being capable of doing that kind of precise control, but it can be done. You, you know, that's so don't downplay a capillary tube for the, and think that it's something completely the past. We hear that nowadays, but that's not the full story. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the next device. And I don't 
have one that I can show you here, but they're out there in the field too. They look very similar to a TEV, thermostatic expansion valve, but it would not have this buck. And that is a, a uh, pressure, uh, EP, help me out, Ricky. <laughs> automatic uh, expansion valve? Uh, automatic expansion valve. Mm -hmm. It's also known as an atmospheric expansion valve because it depends upon the pressure outside the valve on the top of the diaphragm to help determine how much refrigerant to feed into the evaporator. Its main control though is the evaporator pressure. The evaporator pr pressure goes down, it feeds more refrigerant into it. The evaporator pressure goes up, it feeds less refrigerant. Now they're good in some applications where the load's fairly constant. Here's the problem. I want you to think about this. If the load on the evaporator becomes large, what's the pressure going to do inside the evaporator? Go up. It's going to go up. What's the automatic expansion valve going to do? It's going to decrease the amount of refrigerant that's going into it. So what's going to happen? Pretty soon it's going to, the pressure is going to drop back down, but by that time it's going behind what's actually needed. So it's a seesaw, a very bad seesaw, if you have a fluctuating load. That's one of the disadvantages of an automatic expansion valve. It will catch up, but it is not real good for quick changes. Okay, again, I don't want to downplay it, say that's a bad metering device. It has its application, okay? Um, let's go to TXVs, which is probably the most common that you're going to see out there today. The TXV uses both the suction pressure or evaporator pressure. It also uses the bub pressure. The bub is measured in temperature on the suction line or the exit of the evaporator. It's measured in this temperature. Okay. The pressure is being measured that goes into the the uh, evaporator is comparing the two along with the spring pressure inside here and it is throttling the amount of refrigerant that goes into the evaporator on the basis of superheat. Okay? Y'all remember superheat. Superheat goes down then, now remember superheat goes down that means I'm getting to the point where I may be having liquid coming back or getting close then this is going to decrease the amount of refrigerant that's going into the evaporator. Superheat goes up, that's just the opposite. It starts feeding. It's controlling superheat. We call them thermostatic expansion valves, but that's probably not the best description of them. A better description would be called a superheat valve. But that's not what they're called. Okay? Now, I want to take a look at the internal parts some you can take apart, some you cannot. This is the power head. This is what this bulb right here measures the temperature. It has refrigerant in it and controls the pressure on the top side of the diaphragm right here. Okay. 